Hello. This class will be a chair yoga class, which is to say we will be using a chair. So you'll need some sort of chair that you have around your house, either an actual yoga chair or something similar. And a blanket or two for sure. Be one pose maybe where you might want some blocks, but that's optional. I'm sure you could figure out a workaround if you don't want to have your blocks nearby or don't have blocks nearby. So we'll start on the chair. And if your chair, like mine, is a cold yoga chair, it might be nice to have a blanket on it just to give yourself a little warmth. So have your chair. I'm going to use just one blanket to give it a little bit of warmth. Sit on the chair and sit up toward the front of the chair so that the sitting bones feel uh, support on the edge of the chair and the pelvis has a little bit more tendency to tip slightly forward than to slope back. And reach your hands back and hold the backs of the chair behind. Place the feet with care so the feet are about hip width apart, toes are relaxed and extended. Put your eyes closed for a moment and bring your awareness to your breath. Slightly roll the biceps away from the chest and lift the biceps from the elbows toward the chest direction. And turn the triceps a little bit in and energize the triceps toward the hands which hopefully activates the arms. Shoulder blades descend, and the spine between the shoulder blades and the nape of the neck lift up. See if you can keep this sense of length and awareness through the spine, and bring your hands together. Relax your jaw. Relax the space between the eyebrows. Again, the biceps roll slightly out and slightly out. And chant the sound. One time. Take a breath in. chest and just softly bow the head. See if you can bow the head without dropping the chest and bring the hands down to your back. Gaze in the eyes. We'll do a little bit of cat-cow in the chair. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see if you can stay put. Still sitting on the front edge of the chair, perch slightly up. Bring your hands to your knees. Even make the arms a little bit straight at first. You start to tuck the tailbone, pull into a contour of the navel, pull the navel in, stretch the sternum from the throat toward the navel, tuck the chin, push the hands into the knees, roll the biceps in, really rounding the back. And then start to bring the other quad toward the chair. Keep the navel in, but stretch the sternum from the navel to the throat. Turn the biceps out, apart, shoulder blades down, hip the chin, look down. And go back and forth through that movement a few times. Involving the base of the spine, the lumbar spine, the middle spine, the thoracic the neck. The shoulders, really feeling the whole torso in its involvement. Just warming up some movement in the spine. You can't decide how vigorously to pursue the movement or maybe how gently to pursue the movement. One or two more cycles with the feet planted with care. And then find your way to a stable, neutral spine. And then up we come, up to standing. I'm going to take the 
blanket off the chair. We'll be, you know, using the blanket back and forth a few times, but for now you can set this up. And move your chair to one end of the mat. It's generally a good idea working with the chair to have it somewhere where it won't slip. In fact, if you have the capacity to put it against a wall, that can also be nice and that really won't slip. But this is fine, usually, all four legs on the chair. We're going to do downward dog with the hands on the chair. So grab the edges of the seat. Step your hand, your feet back, feet at least hip width, and come into downward dog, feet wide. Stretch the skin on the soles of the feet so the feet feel uh, aware and alive in your consciousness. Turn the biceps toward the ceiling and pull the biceps a little bit toward the shoulders. Turn the triceps toward one another and press the triceps away from the armpits and toward the chin. Together, these actions should help you strengthen and lengthen the arms. Draw the navel and move the groins back. Inner thighs up and back. Kneecaps up. Outer hips back. Feel the weight and length in the legs. Lengthen the spine. Good. And then release. And walk your feet forward. And come up to stand. Now take your blanket. And just fold it. Mine's already folded in half. That's fine. You don't need it to be too big of a fold. And actually, now's the time when you might want your block. Put two blocks. So I'm going to set my left foot onto the blanket. So my heel is a little bit up and the ball of the foot is down. And then depending on the height of your body versus your chair, you know, the mobility you have, you can use no blocks, one block, a block up on medium level, or a couple of blocks. And step up, your right foot up onto the block. Now the natural tendency is for the pelvis to shift a little bit forward, which is okay, but not totally what we're going to do. So press your left shin back, press your left kneecap back, press your left femur, especially the top of the femur, back. Now bring the pivot point forward, navel up, chest up. Raise the arms up overhead. Push down to the ball of the left foot. Lift the kneecap up. Move on up, tail on down. Roll the biceps away from the ears and down toward the shoulders. Shoulder blades down with the spine between the shoulder blades up. Roll the triceps slightly in and up toward the face. And then release your hands and switch sides. So, and when you walk a little, step your on your blanket, right heel up, ball the right foot down, step your left foot. And just being mindful that there's always a tendency to shift forward. So press your standing leg, press the shin back, kneecap back, femur back, especially the top of the femur, up high by the bone, and then the pivot bone forward, navel in. And raise the arms up. Push through the ball of the foot on your stand. Lift the knee down. Lift the pivot point. Lift the chest. Stretch the triceps toward the fingertips. Pull the biceps slightly down. Shoulder blades slightly down. Neck and neck up the neck. Turn the biceps a little bit away from and set your blocks and make it aside. We'll come back again to that, but not in the end. So we're going to be working with the downward dog with the chair and some lunge actions. So again, Hold the sides of your chair and step back to a downward facing dog. Straighten the arms, roll the biceps a little bit up, triceps slightly in. Now step the right foot forward all the way until the knee is almost going to touch the chin. Lift the chest a little, pull the biceps out. The ball of the back foot comes up. 
even slightly launch through the ball of the back foot. See if you can firm the left knee, pull the left knee cap toward the pelvis, through the thumb, toward the navel, navel in, chest forward. The shoulder blades go down the back, and the spine between the shoulder blades goes toward the head, helping the neck get long. Down, down, down. Flip left, left, forward until the, the chin is vertical. And again, launch up off the ball of the back foot. Pull the left, the right arch toward the right shin, the right shin toward the knee, the kneecap toward the pelvis, pivot bone toward the navel. Roll the biceps away from one another, and the shoulder blades down the back, and the spine between the shoulder blades toward the neck. And then switch back. Down the foot. Step the right foot forward. Refine the actions. Straighten the back leg, navel in, chest forward, long neck. And now bring your awareness to the back foot. Pivot on the ball of the back foot. Bring the left heel down. The whole sole of the left foot. This opens the pelvis slightly more to the left. Keep the right knee moving toward the chair. And lift the ball on the left foot. Back up. And pivot. Bring the sole of the foot down. Lift the left kneecap. Activate the left kneecap toward the pelvis. The back leg straight, lift the back heel, and step back. Down we go. Switching sides, left foot steps forward. Roll the back foot, it's really activated. Back leg really straight, pull the kneecap toward the pelvis. Engage the musculature. Roll the biceps apart, shoulder blades down the back. Long neck. Now pull the chest slightly forward as you pivot in the ball of the back foot so that bringing the back foot down doesn't pull the whole pose too far back. Try to keep the musculature around the right knee firm. Pivot back on the ball of the foot. Now you feel the pelvis faces really down toward the floor. Pivot again on the ball of the back foot. Bring the whole sole of the foot down and you feel this opens the pelvis to the right. Keep the chest facing the chair, keep the gaze facing slightly forward, slightly down. Pivot, bring the ball of the back foot up. Step the left foot back, downward dog again. Adjust the feet long through the armpits. Move the hips back as far away from the chair as you can. Grind inner knees up, groins up and back, outer hips up and back. And then really stand, step the feet forward, and come up to sit. This time we'll add in, we'll come to lunge, and then we'll lift the chest up and come up into warrior one without the use of the chair. So if you need or prefer to modify and do warrior one with the chair, of course you can't do that. But otherwise, bring your hands to the seat of the chair. Sit back, downward facing. Feel the stability of the contact in your feet with the floor when you have the hands elevated like this, because this is how we, we want to keep this nice, solid relationship of the feet to the floor in the standing pose. Step your right foot forward. Now pivot on the ball of the back foot so that the left foot comes down. And you can adjust the length of your stance the right knee and the right shin move toward the chair. And the left leg reaches back. You can stay here, hands on the chair. This gives a lot of support. So if this feels safer, preferable, stay here. Roll the biceps apart, shoulder blades down. If you can, if it feels appealing to you, raise the arms up, off the chair, or your one, your Lift from the navel up, lift the triceps up. Triceps roll slightly in, biceps pull down and apart. Lift the neck, lift the spine between the shoulder blades. 
and then bring your hands back to the chair. Step back. Step the left foot forward. Pivot on the ball of the back foot. Bring the left, the right heel down. Left knee toward the head of the chair. You can stay here. Roll the biceps apart, shoulder blades down, neck forward. Left knee forward, right leg back. You can stay here or raise the arms up. See if you can keep the left knee just lightly grazing your chair. Bring the right ribs slightly forward, left ribs slightly back. Lift the back ribs up, the triceps up, the nape of the neck up, and then come back to the chair. Step back briefly. Downward dog. And then walk your feet forward. So we're going to do some sun citations with the chair. And I'll show it the first time. So if you know it, of course, you can tag along with me the first time. But otherwise, you might want to watch it the first time and see how it goes. This is such a nice way to do sun salutations and have a sense of the quote, full sun salutation without quite so much weight bearing on the shoulders or on the hands. It brings more weight into the legs, which can, which can be helpful for building strength and communication with the legs and also take some pressure off the arms and shoulders, wrists, all these joints that can be a bit more fussy. So I'll show at once. I'm standing and now raise the arms up. Sit on, dive in down. Inhale, hands to the chair, extend the spine with one leg. And then exhale and step in back. Down. And then step in. the right foot forward, pivot the foot down and stay here or raise the arms up. And then all the way back. Down. Step in the left foot forward, turn the right heel down, stay here or raise the arms up. And then all the way back to down. And then Optional, you can come forward to plank, bending the elbows a little bit, come forward and up, upward facing the up. and back to down. And walk the feet forward, extend the spine. the plan, maybe do it with me, or we'll do it all together. I'll talk you through it. Feel free to wait out the parts that don't suit your body or your needs. Catch up with the sequence when it suits you. So from standing, inhale, raise the arms up, reach down to the legs and tailbone up, the arms and chest, exhale, dive forward, bring your head toward the chair or to the chair, relax the neck. Hands to the seat, inhale, extend the spine, Long neck. Exhale, step the feet back, downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward and turn the left foot down. Stay here or inhale, raise your arms up, palms overhead. And then exhale all the way back, down the dog. Step the left foot forward, turn the right foot. Down. Hands on the chair or inhale the arms up. And exhale all the way back. Downward dog. You can't stay in downward dog. Or inhale, come forward to a plank. Exhale, bend the elbows a little. And then come forward and up. Upward facing dog. All the way back. Downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. Turn the biceps up. Triceps in and toward the hands. Hips back, groins up and back. Put a little bend in the knees, lift the heels, look forward. And step the feet forward, extend the spine, shoulders back. And exhale, fold down. Head to or toward the chair. And then inhale, all the way up. Hands up the back. Good. Good. Inhale, raise the arms up. 
tail dive forward. Inhale, hands to the seat, extend the spine. Exhale, step back, down. This time, inhale, as you step the left foot forward, turn the right. Hands on the chair or inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, down with the seat. Right foot forward, left. Hands on the chair or raise the arms up. Inhale, exhale, down with the seat. Stay in downward dog, we'll come forward to plank. Bend the elbows a little chaturanga. Inhale, forward and up, upward facing dog. And back, downward facing dog. A couple breaths. Turn the biceps toward the ceiling and pull the biceps toward the shoulders. And stretch the triceps away from the armpits. Kneecaps lift, groins lift, up and back. Lift the knee heels a little, bend the knees a little, look forward. Step forward, extend the spine, and then fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, raise the hands up. Exhale, back forward. Hands to the seat, extend the spine, and step back. Down the front. Right foot forward, left foot down. Hands on the chair. Raise the arms up. Exhale all the way. Down the dog. Left foot forward, right foot down. Hands on the chair. Or raise the arms up. Exhale. Hands to the chair. Step back. Stay in down the dog. Inhale to plank for knees. Keep it going toward the navel. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale. Upward facing dog, throw the legs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Strong arms, navel in, kneecaps up, groins up and back, femurs up and back. Bend the knees, lift the heels, look forward and step the feet forward. Extend the spine, shoulders back. Exhale, release. Down, relax the head. Inhale, pull the way up, rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Release the arms, be standing in Tadasana. Arms along at your sides. Lift the kneecaps, lift the pubic bone. Lift the sternum. Lift the biceps and hold the biceps slightly apart. Move the shoulder blades down, triceps toward the fingertips, tailbone toward the feet. Lengthen up the spine between the shoulder blades, the neck of the neck. So there are any number of forces present to help you feel grounded. Anchor it stable, and any number of forces present to help you feel lifted, ascendant. Relax the jaw. Now we'll come back to our blanket with optional blocks. We're going to do the same sort of thing that we did before, but adding a twist. So I'm going to put my blocks up on the chair and my left heel up on the blanket. And step my right foot up on the blocks. I really, it's nice if the heel is higher than the pelvis. It gives a little bit more softness and descent to the pelvis. Keeping in mind this tendency, press the standing shin back, the standing kneecap back, the standing femur back, and then lift the pubic bone. Now, we're at a twist. Stand tall, and twisting toward the bent knee. You can have your hand on your hip, or you can reach your arm back. Sometimes a little bit more tiring, but also sometimes a little bit more energizing. This standing leg, keep pressing your femur back, navel back. Chest up. Right. 
switching sides. Step your ball of your right foot on the sticky mat, heel of the right foot slightly elevated. Step your left leg up. If it's helpful for you to be near something that you can hold on to for balance, of course, that's always a good plan. Now, with your standing leg, press the shin back, kneecap back, femur, especially the top of the femur, back. Kneecap up, you could pull on that, chest up, navel back. Stand tall, and then twisting toward the bend. There's a tendency here for that hip of the bend knee to lift up for stability. So see if you can lift your standing kneecap, your standing femur, and descend the top of the left femur, the bend leg. Navel in and up, chest up, but shoulders down. Move the biceps slightly away from the chest and up without lifting the shoulders. Biceps down, shoulder blades down without compressing the mid back. Lift the spine between the shoulder blades, lift the nape of the neck. Release. And you can set the blocks uh, aside just for a moment. Actually, keep one block. We'll add this in. Keep one block. And if you want, again, my chair is quite full because it's metal and my practice area is full, so I'm going to put a blank on my chair for comfort more than anything else. That said, also, if your chair is quite high and when you sit the chair low, and when you sit in it and your knees are high, then you'll need some more height on your chair so that when you sit, your thighs can be parallel. Now, bring your feet wide, wider than hip width. Toes out a little, femurs out. Try to look down at your feet and your femurs and feel like the thigh bones and the feet are parallel. Sometimes the feet can be pointing forward and the knees pointing out, and it's all just a little more torque on the knees than we need. So toes and knees point in the same direction. And then come forward onto your elbows. Lift one sitting bone and then the other and move the sitting bone slightly back. In my case, toward the wall behind me. Push down and the elbows lift the chest, make the neck long. The shoulder blades go toward the pelvis and the neck goes away from the pelvis. This is a nice position to reset the low back. Even sometimes the knees might start to drift in, so keep working the knees apart. You can even use those arms a little bit to help compel the knees apart. Now take your left hand down onto the block, and down any height. Tuck the block right in the middle between your feet. Push and bring your right hand near your right knee. So twisting to the right. Gently now, we're just we're just Working around in the body, hopefully in a way that feels good, not too bossy. Turn the left bicep out, move the left shoulder blade down the back, make the neck long. Keep pressing the knees away from each other so the knees don't collapse in. Turn from the left armpit to the right armpit. Hopefully this fits nice and deep in the base of the spine. And then release and bring your right hand down, left hand up to sink to the left. Again, push through the feet, push the knees apart. Turn the right bicep outward, right shoulder blade down the back. The thoracic spine between the shoulder blades is long, neck is long. Turn, gaze. Deepen a little bit. Turn from the right armpit to the left armpit. And really use the left hand. It's really pushing down into that knee to help make the leg heavy and also to help make the spine turn. But and then unwind. And back. Bring that to the And we'll do Parshva Konasana and then Parvita Parshva Konasana with the chair. In this case, I think I'm going to add another blanket to have a little bit more height. This is a bit of a personal choice, but you'll see what feels better with your body. 
and I'm gonna move the chair a little bit to, to the right side of my mat. Sit in such a way that the right knee can be bent and the left leg can be straight. And often, this is the deal breaker. So a lot of times, if you're a little too low for your body, that back leg, it just it won't straighten. You can't talk it in the straight. If that's the case, the solution is more height under your pelvis. Keep adding blankets, even blocks, whatever feels stable. It can also sometimes help to let this, allow this front foot to come slightly forward. That is an okay, of course, occasions. Now, before we even go deeper into the pose, see if you can straighten this back up. Look at it. You're not cheating yourself, but see, can you really make that leg feel straight and have some energy moving through? If the answer is no, add another blanket. A little bit of height. Extend your arms out wide. Reach from the pubic bone toward the right inner knee and from the pubic bone down into that back foot. Now reach out with your right hand, bring your right forearm if you like, and reach back with the left hand. Catch some part of the chair behind you if you can. Leave them in the fabric of your pants. If you can catch the chair, catch the chair. Now push through the right elbow, turn the chest from right to left. Shoulder blades go down and the spine between the shoulder blades goes toward the head so you are feeling more. Be aware of the back leg. All that, all those sun citations we did with the chair, all that downward elbow with the chair, how solid you felt in your legs. Look for that kind of solidity in the back leg now. Can you lift your left kneecap away from the shin toward the pelvis and keep that leg feeling strong? If you can, if you want, take your right knee and reach down and grab one of the front legs of the chair. With the right hand, you push the chair leg toward the floor. Top turn, long neck, turn. Strong legs, long neck, turn. See if you can take one or two breaths that feel unflustered. Working with the chair, usually we can't afford to stay a little bit longer in the pelvis, although it's not to say that it's without effort. Now, you gotta get up and move the whole chair. Just the way it goes. And the second side, of course, you already know that the two sides can't be quite different. So, Left knee bent, left thigh, left sitting bone supported. The whole right side of the pelvis is not on its blanket. It's reaching back. Can you lift your right kneecap toward the pelvis and your left inner knee away from the pubic bone, keeping this leg straight? If this leg won't straighten, you know what to do. Raise more height. Extend your arms out wide. Just a brief little glimpse of what you do. And then reach out, bring your forearm to your knee and reach back with this hand. See if you can catch the chair behind you. Adjust the feet as needed. Push the left up and lift the chest. The shoulder blades go down the back and the spine between the shoulder blades goes toward the neck. Helps the neck with the neck. If you can, take your left hand, reach down and grab that front left leg of the chair. Turn. Here, once you grab that leg of the chair, get it, get it in your hand, you get a handful and push that leg into the floor. Use that to help yourself turn. Keep the back leg strong, the navel in. The spine long, the tailbone reaches toward the right foot, and the thoracic spine, nape of the neck, reach toward the head. So there is a gentle, self created traction through and along the spine. Good, and really separate yourself up. Still together. Just be for a moment, sitting on your chair, feet a little bit apart, you can get eyes closed, just neutralize the spine, draw the navel in.
read the parchment from us. So, take your chair, put it on the other side of your mat. You're going to put your right side on the chair, but this time the chair is sideways. So, in my case, I have the chair facing over to the left. I'm going to put my right side onto the chair. Now, here again, the back leg is bent. We are going to lean forward, and that does make straightening the back leg easier. But see if you can get the back leg pretty close to straight, or else add more height. If you want the right side of your thigh, right thigh closer to the back of the chair, and the left leg able to extend roughly back. Now, take that warrior one action. Lift up through the chest and start to hinge forward. And see if you can bring your left hand around to the back leg of the chair. I'm not sure if you can see that hip grabbing here, the back of the chair. Right hand on the back of the chair. The right hand I'm pushing down and toward the head direction. And see now, can you get some life in that back leg so it's not wishy washy? Can you push the ball of the foot down and the knee away? Pull the shin toward the knee, pull the knee toward the pelvis. Pull the femur toward the pelvis, turn. Shoulder blades go down, the neck is long. So we're using the chair, but we're using ourselves as well. switch sides. So keep that chair facing the same direction, but just move it another edge of the mat. your time. This time, step the left leg over. Right and like I said, I'm sure you felt this now on the other side. If the right leg stops off, a little bent, the back leg, that's fine. But as you lean forward, this should make the straightening action available to you, and you should work that action. Raise your right arm up. Give yourself a sense of reach, like warrior one, and then hinge forward and reach the hand back and across to the back leg of the chair. Again, I'll give you a better view. Grab it in the back leg of the chair. Knee up high, down low, whatever works for you. And the left hand comes to the back of the chair, pushing down and toward the finger direction. See with this back leg, can you push the ball of the foot down, the shin away from the floor, the front knee to the back knee. Pull the right kneecap toward the pelvis, femur toward the pelvis. Sternum from the navel to the throat. Shoulder blades down the body and the spine between the shoulder blades grows, the neck grows. If you want, after a few breaths, you can, of course, go a little lower. That might not be appealing, but if it is, you can do it. And then, release. Really and bring yourself up. And then, I'm going to turn my chair, but you can just stay put. Turn yourself. And you're just facing forward on the chair. Again, with the eyes closed, just have a moment, let the shoulders relax, but have a sort of neutral moment. A little lift in the chest, the biceps slightly lift and turn out, triceps descend and turn in. So you can just watch. I'm going to demonstrate first what we're going to do, and then I'll show you, and then we'll do it together. So I'm only going to need one blanket for this next pose, and now my blanket goes across the back of my chair. Now here, don't worry about this 
we have different chairs, we have different bodies, our spines are different lengths, we're different heights to start with. Doesn't really, there's not like a exact correct placement, but you want to have some padding back here because we're going to do a little bit of chest opening. So the first thing to do here is take your heels and put them up on the chair and have the balls of the feet on the floor. This is important because this action of the heel pushing into the chair helps keep the chair grounded. So it's a safety issue. Now bring your, you'll bring your shoulders back and you'll reach your hands down and grab the back legs of your chair. However wide your chair is, see how you can work with this. Now I'm gonna push, just watch the first time. I'm gonna push in the balls of my feet in the floor, the heels into my chair, and I'm gonna really scoop my tailbone toward my beautiful keeping my shoulders on the chair and lift up. So this is a modified version of bridge. You can look forward, then look up at the ceiling or back if it's comfortable for your neck. It's a big opening in the chest and upper back. Big use of the glute muscles. And then just to sit down, you just sit your hips down and then bring the head up. So we'll do that a couple times. Let's see how that goes. So now we'll all do it together. Heels on your chair, balls of the feet on the floor. Butt is on the front of the seat, so you have to lean back a little and find the back of the chair. Now reach your hands down, hold the back legs of the chair. You can walk them more once you get in a position, that's fine. So press the heels down, scoop the buttocks, lift the buttocks up. Lift the pelvis up, walk your hands down the chair. Roll the triceps in and toward the hands. Biceps up and apart. Push the heels into the chair. Engage the hamstrings, engage the buttocks, lift the pelvis, open the chest. And then to come down, just slowly sit down. So even if you can use your hands, bring your hands back to your head and lift your head up. That can be a good way to come out if you're, I should have shown that the first time, but that can be a good way to come out if your neck is prone to uh, feeling a little bit vulnerable. In that case, I would say probably not even to get so far back with the head that you do feel overexposed on the way out. So we'll do it again. Heels on the chair. Buttocks a little forward, lean back until the crossbar of the chair is somewhere on your shoulder blades. Walk your hands down, grab the sides of the chair. Push down into the heels. Lift the hips up, engage your buttocks. Push to the feet, lift the pubic bone. Walk your hands down the chair. Turn the biceps out and up slightly toward the shoulders and the triceps in and down. Open. Chest open. The legs strong, buttocks strong. And then sit the hips down. You can use your hands to catch the head. Bring them down. Sit for a moment. So just watch this next demonstration. You can repeat what we just did, or you can sit here. Feel pleased with yourself to catch up with your breath. Last time we'll do this, I'll give the option to extend the arms. This is what it looks like. The same setup. Push with the heels, lift the hips. And then this time, if you can, if it's safe, if it feels good in your body, you can extend the arms overhead. We get a lot of arms in the overhead plane with all that downward dog and warrior one. And so this could feel good. And then come out and just sit back down. That is the last layout. Okay, let's try it. Pour it on. See what feels good for you. Heels on your chair, balls of the feet on the floor. Buttocks a little forward on the seat. Now lean back so you find the back of your chair. Could be, by the way, in your chair. You have to sit closer to the back of the chair for the chair to hit you in the right place. Work with the chair you got, work with the body you got. It's all a moving target, that's fine. Now hold the back legs of the chair. Push through the heels, engage your butt. As soon as the butt comes off, it engages. Push down, lift up. 
lift the chest. Now, if you can, and if you want, you can take the arm overhead. Now, really push the heels down just a bit. Lift the pubic bone. Roll the biceps away from the ears and slightly toward the shoulders. Triceps toward the face and toward the hands. Reach. And then release. So the hips down. Head is the last part up, not Keep flat. And turn to the right in your chair. Place your feet under your heels under your knees. Feet about hip width apart. Place the feet in your chair. Sit tall and just gently twisting toward the back of the chair. Not a big eager beaver twist. We're just undoing, gently undoing some of the intensity of the back bends. So you're not trying to do anything too outrageous. Draw the navel in and even take those, the ribs below your right chest slightly down toward the navel and in so that that lower right ribs don't, don't pop forward. Shoulder blades down and the spine between the shoulder blades up. Release, spin yourself around. Place the feet with care and twisting to the left. Here, take the front ribs below your left chest, down slightly toward the waistline and in. See if you can turn from the ribs below the chest. Rather than turning from the chest or above the chest, turn from that band directly above the navel. Keep the shoulders down and the neck long. That helps to decompress the spine. Come back to the center. Now we're going to do a downward dog with the chair, and this might not work with all the kitchen chairs in the world. It definitely works with the yoga chair. So I'll show two versions. And if, the, if you have an actual yoga chair, you know, keep your blanket across the back of the chair. And I'm going to go for this exact part of the hip crease, where my hip crease is when I lift my leg, and place that across where the blanket is for the chair. And I have to, for me and my body, I have to be pretty high up on my tippy toes to do this. The legs are firm and engaged, and draping the spine forward. You can bend your elbows and hold the edges of the chair, extend your arms out. This is such a nice way to get some traction. Walk so that the ribs and the belly don't just drop, so you keep the belly slightly engaged. If your chair doesn't allow for that, if it does, then off you go. If it doesn't, repeat the same version of chair down on the other chair several times with the class, hands on the seat. This is also such a nice version. Or I should say also just if you really are not able to make peace with the intensity of the back of the chair in your hips and groins, remember that this option here also always exists for you. See if you can let the breath deepen. Just watch for a moment. We're going to do Upa Vishta Konasana with the chair and maybe in a slightly unexpected way. So if you had two blankets, it might be nice to have one blanket to sit on and the other blanket with the back of the chair. But um, if you only have one blanket, I suppose you could choose, but I would probably choose the blanket under, uh, under my pelvis. I'm going to go at a slight angle just because of the constraints of my practice area. So I'm sitting in Upavishtakonasana with the legs out wide, 
you know how it is in this pose. The legs go as wide as they want to go. And I have the chair quite near me and facing away from me. I'm going to remove this for the sake of my demonstration. You're welcome to keep it in there on practice. And then I'm going to take one forearm up to the other forearm up and then rest my forehead. And what I want to feel here is a sense of stretch through the armpits and length through the spine. So if the back is rounding or pulling back, bring the chair closer to you. Could be practically vertical. But allowing the forehead to rest on the forearms, allow the shoulder blades to come down, and allow the spine to feel a sense of length. So bring yourself to sitting. Legs out wide, a little height in the hips. Again, this can vary depending on how tall you are and how tall the chair is. You can bring the chair closer to you, further away. You want to feel some sense of reach. You want to feel a sense of being. Lengthen by the bones. The sitting bones reach down the outer hips, reach down. Almost like if you had a pair of, cro a pair of croquet hoops, one at the top of each hip, holding the head of the femur down. Put the shoulder blades down, but the spine and the neck descend. The triceps, even here, the triceps reach toward the elbows. After several breaths, if you want, if you have more range of mobility, this is very much not available to all bodies. We can turn the chair so it faces you and come much further forward. And if this just makes you feel crumpled up or overexposed, then it is not, it's just an option. It's not a necessity. Keep the legs active, keep the kneecaps drawing back toward the pelvis direction. The outer hips reaching down, shoulder blades down, so the neck stays long. Steps away from the chest. Shoulder the blade slightly down, the spine between the shoulder blades strong and up. A few smooth, soothing breaths, so not too strong, not too weak. Set up for Shavasana. If you have a way that you want and need to do Shavasana today, then by all means do that. Otherwise, we'll use the chair since it's a chair class. You can keep my foot right across the seat of the chair. And you might still also like to have a little something for your head. This again can really depend how tall or how short you are. So you can always have the chair, if your femurs are quite long, you have the chair a little further from you. And if your femurs are shorter, this doesn't work for my body, you can have the chair right close to you. I'm going to go a little further back so that the weight of the shins can rest. Support for the head as desired. And then just for a moment, push the shins, the calves into the floor, lift them into the chair, lift the pelvis a little bit in. Move the tailbone toward the chair and set your back down. Let the arms come up. Move it away from the sides of the body. 
Turn the biceps away and see if you can even say the snow of the shoulder blades. And then look at more firmly underneath you. So the shoulder blades feel flat and stable. Relax your jaw. Relax the space between the eyes. starts to stir. So that the rousing becomes And then as you're ready, put your hands back to place your hands on the other side. And then you continue to go to the seat. And then roll to your side. yourself up with the head for the last thing and here it always needs to shoot up. Have something to sit on as needed. You don't want to lift any rounds up.